Hello and welcome to the Dittenworks YouTube channel where usually I talk about loudspeakers but today I'm going to be controversial and talk about cables, mains cables specifically. Just quickly, my background with this is when I had my old Pioneer Air Studios amp and CD player, Super Audio CD player, with all the standard cables I thought okay I'll treat myself to some decent cables. First of all I bought a better interconnect put the CD player into the amplifier, had a listen, and thought there was a little bit more detail there. I could understand that it was worthwhile spending a few quid on an interconnect. It was vastly better than the sort of cheap uh, red and white thin RCA cables that you usually get with equipment. And then I set about investigating mains cables, and I bought this Russ Andrews main cable. They're quite expensive, so I bought one. And it is actually this very one. I've had it all this time. And a lot of people would probably think the amplifier was the best place to plug the new cable into, but I chose to plug it into the CD player. And it's fortunate that I did, because when I plugged this very cable into the CD player using the upgraded interconnect and the standard mains cable on the amplifier, I noticed an improvement in base weight on tracks played on the CD player. So I thought, this is great, these do work. I'm convinced it's not snake oil. But when I bought the second one of these, which I still have, and plugged it into the amplifier, there wasn't the same difference. I couldn't actually detect any difference at all, but I was confident in the fact that at least I'd put half decent mains cables and interconnects on the system and left it like that for a long, long time. Move forward in time and the system has changed somewhat, so there's more components which require more mains leads, which required more expense. So knowing that these had worked for me on source components, I set about buying more Russ Andrews cable. Now, there has been some huge controversy over Russ Andrews cables over the years and fuses and various other things, but I kind of ignored that because in my own experience, this cable had definitely, definitely improve the CD player. So with the new setup, I just put all new cables in there and I'd not really heard it with the standard cable, so I knew it was just done. Then I messed about tweaking it with different interconnects, different materials, silver, different, uh, different types even. I went from phono to XLRs, then played about the speaker cable and got it to a level that I was happy with. Now we get to present day. So a couple of days ago, I was contacted by a guy called Matt O'Donoghue, who's a massive Spendor SP1 fan. And anybody who's a, a subscriber of my channel will know that I absolutely love Spendors. I currently use a pair all the time. And he'd sort of cut his teeth with rewiring the crossovers in Spendor BC1s and SP1s and was very active on the old Spendor group. He also has a background in Funk Firm. He's done some work for Icon Audio, and he's just somebody who likes experimenting and trying to see if there's any way of changing the sonic characteristics of a component, in this instance, the Spendor BC1 or SP1. And after quite a long-winded chat about Spendor speakers and Terry Miles and Derek Hughes and Spencer Hughes, he then mentioned to me that he's got a little company his own company that make mains cables. Now, you've got to look at this, right? So this is my Russ Andrews, right? And now look at the thickness that we've got there. The quality of the watt gate is better. The quality of the plug is better than Russ Andrews. It's the same shape, but that's silver rather than really tarnished, probably, I should imagine that's probably brass. It might be tarnished silver, I can't remember. But this is significantly better looking, much more chunky. So his company is Sonic Cables, www.soniccables.co.uk, cables with a K. And he sent me this through to have a listen. So what I did is I repeated the same experiment that I'd done all those years ago with the Russ Andrews cable. Now Matt had suggested to me that I try this on my amplifier first. Big problem with that. This wouldn't fit behind the rack <laughs> into the amplifier. So I would have had to have pulled the amp out, which I did later on. But the first port of call, I plugged this into my transport. 
Now, a lot of people do think cabling is just a load of nonsense. I've got to say to you that in certain circumstances, changing the cables will change the sonic characteristics of the component or the overall system. Just the same as changing interconnects, just the same as changing speaker wire. When I plugged this into the CD transport, every other piece of equipment was with the same cabling. This, Ross Andrews, either this stuff or the yellow cable. I just used this on the CD transport. Press play. Now the first thing I noticed was there was definitely sonic characteristic differences. I'm not gonna say better because better is totally subjective and better suggests that I'm telling you to go out and buy one of these cables. I'm not. What I'm gonna do is tell you that there was a sonic difference. And if I can explain that, maybe that will help you guys if you are thinking about changing cables. So when I plug this cable into my TAC P3 transport, everything else is the same. Interconnects, everything else is the same. I suddenly detected slightly better instrument placement. The sound stage changed ever so slightly. The detail HF changed ever so slightly. And I listened and listened and listened and in no way were my ears offended by the sonic characteristic changes. Tick, good, it works. I then moved that cable to the DAC plug the original cable back into the transport. Not quite the same sonic characteristic differences, but there was definitely something different. Slightly harder for me to explain that, but it did sound slightly cleaner. Maybe a hint sharper, but I didn't actually find it favorably different. I then tried the amplifier. Now, this was an upheaval and a half. I had to pull my Meridian 557 out of the rack and have that half hanging out of the rack to plug this beast in. Done that, switched it on. I left the amplifier for about half an hour to warm right up, even though it was only off for a few minutes to get it approximately back to the temperature or that it was before I switched the cable. Repeated the same experiment using the transport and this is where the biggest difference occurred. And this is where things start to contradict my own thoughts. Remember what I said about this cable only affecting the source. It made no difference to the amplifier. When I plugged that cable into the Meridian 557, all of a sudden I had a very, very different tonal texture over the whole overall spectrum of sound. Bass felt a little bit tighter. Instrument separation was cleaner. Again, sound stage had changed ever so slightly. And this, this is all massively confusing because I'm, I'm, I'm only changing one component at a time. And against my own thoughts, thinking that the source was the best place to change the cable, in this instance, it was on the amp. The only trouble is, is I didn't really want to leave my amplifier hanging half out of the rack. Um, I probably have to modify the rack if I was going to use this cable on my amplifier. But what I would do is use this cable on my transport. And then for the final experiment. Now, I didn't think this was going to work. So I have got a Russ Andrews four-way adapter, which a guy posted on YouTube the other day saying it was a load of rubbish. That when he took it apart, there was no filtering. It was just a load of usual regular wiring in there. But it's a reasonably good looking, much better than you would find, uh, you know, one of those white four way adapters with the wire hard wired in. I've got one of those, love it or hate it, that's what I use. I plug this into the front end of that and then plugged all of my other ones, these things, back into the components, switched it on. The only difference here is the amplifier, my Meridian is plugged directly into the wall. That has its own supply rather than the four-way adapter. And I thought this is not gonna work because this cable is then feeding into an existing product that I know the sonic characteristics of and all the other wires are just the regular wires. It made a difference. It absolutely made a difference. I can't explain how it makes a difference, but it did. 
and everything that I detected on those individual cables now worked across the whole thing. So I tried streaming, I tried the CD player, I didn't bother trying vinyl because I didn't think it would make a difference, but I'm certainly gonna try that after I finish shooting this video. <sighs> what is it about cables? I'd love to know what the answer is because when you think about it, it's just electricity being fed to a component. But if you think about interference, that could be a factor. The quality of the joints, is it the fact that I've unplugged a component and plugged a new one in? Would it have been worthwhile me just unplugging this and plugging it back in before I did it? I didn't think to do that. I could plug this into a kettle and see if it boils the water faster. I doubt it will. So it's not about, is it about inductance, capacitance, the length of the wire? Who knows? But what I can say, and very, I'm sure this is going to be controversial, that Matt O'Donoghue's wire cable made a difference to my system in a favourable way. So I couldn't run this on the amplifier. I could run it on the transport, but what I would do is run this into that adapter and have the whole thing sound different. That's the controversy for today, guys. I hope you enjoy this video because I've enjoyed the experiment and I was hugely skeptical on based on my previous experience of this cable, that it did make a difference on the source, but it made no difference to the amplifier as where this, made a difference to everything the DAC it didn't make it didn't make a big enough difference for me to have invested heavily in it but maybe my DAC is quite happy with just one of these on it I tried the preamp as well I forgot to mention that I actually tried the preamp with just that cable and all the other cables on there again it didn't make as big a difference as it did on the transport or the power amp but again there was definitely a difference and actually, we can discount that experiment because when I plug this into the four-way adapter, which is feeding all of the components, minus the amplifier, there was a detectable difference again. So, Matt O'Donoghue, you have uh, wiped out my scepticism, particularly on your cables, and uh, well done for making them. They're all handmade. He makes them himself. He sent me a message saying that he'd worked for 10 hours to complete this cable and get it shipped to me in time for me to be able to do this review on my day off because I only have Mondays and Wednesdays to do reviews. And this was noticeable, not after really massively long extended periods of listening, because I'd already had massive extended periods of listening on Monday. I had the hi-fi on for 15 hours on Monday. So I, I know anybody knows their own setup. They'll know it inside out. And this morning, I started listening to music at eight o'clock and we're now coming up to 12 o'clock. So I've had my system on a fair few hours this morning and plugging this in was instant, instant. Now, whether these sonic characteristic changes would be favorable to everyone's ears, who knows? That's very subjective. But all I can say that on the transport, I enjoyed this cable. On the amplifier, unfortunately hanging out at the front of the unit, I enjoyed this cable. And in the best way was the fact that I could plug in this to my existing four-way adapter and enjoyed it across every component. Fantastic. Well done, Matt. I really, really appreciate you sending this to me. If anybody wants to check it out, look on his website. He's a lovely guy. He really, really, really is enthusiastic about this hobby of ours. And... On a personal note, I love the fact that he loves Spendor's because Spendor, other than Celestian, is my favourite brand. I absolutely love Spendor speakers. Anyway, guys, take care. I'm sure this is going to be hugely controversial and there'll be many comments, I should imagine, telling me how I did this experiment wrong. Well, I'm sorry. I apologise in advance. I apologise in advance if you don't believe any of this. But I don't really care because it worked for me and I'm telling you about it. And if it works for you, brilliant. If it doesn't and you're sceptical, that's absolutely fine. Because at the end of the day, it's all about having something that you're pleased with. And uh, I was very pleased to try that. Take care, guys. I'll speak to you soon.